The president has a rocket powered limo with a ram plow attached and he must get to his destination as fast as possible. How did he get a car like this? Find out in this video. Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod that adds rockets and ram plows to any vehicle, even modded vehicles. So to install the mod, first you go to the parts menu and then you find license plate design and you pick the Agent Y Universal Jado slash ram plow. And here we could add the ram plow and we can modify the rockets. So right now it's on the roof, but we could change it to the doors, which I kind of like better because then we get two rockets and it feels like it's better for flying in the air because they push you forward more where the one on the roof kind of pushes you downward sometimes. But you can see with these rockets, we have a beautiful flight straight into a rock and then the car explodes on impact and it's going to fall to the ground. And there's not really much to look at after an impact like that. So I'll reset it. And then just for fun, what I want to do is I want to try to fly to the houses. Like maybe you got out of work really late and you want to get home as fast as possible. With these rockets, you can get home in like 20 seconds flat. There's my home right there, straight ahead. And boom, the truck is perfectly parked. Where's the driver's compartment? I don't really know. But the truck frame made it there so if you hold on to the frame instead of sitting in the seat that is the fastest way to get home from the top of the mountain and just for comparison purposes let's do the exact same thing using the single roof mounted rocket and one of the funny things about this rocket is it immediately deforms the driver's compartment so watch this Whoop! just like that we have a messed up looking pickup truck and in slow motion it's also kind of amusing you see it just de form then it's at maximum deformation and we go but you also notice that rear suspension is really lifting up into the air which means we can also do a really dumb thing we can do all kinds of weird stoppy like things for example you ever seen somebody do a donut with only the front wheels on the ground and their back wheels up into the air and this just looks completely ridiculous and if it wasn't for the rocket it would make absolutely no sense what's going on Another thing we can do though is the infinite stoppy. So with this, all we need to do is do a little stoppy and then we can use the rocket to just maintain it in the air forever or at least until we run out of fuel because there's nothing that's gonna stop you from holding it. You can also try driving forward a little bit while you do it, but that's quite a bit harder to do and I've just ran out of rocket fuel. Another fun thing we can do is we can mess around with some of the settings of the rocket in the tuning menu. So we can change the offset of the rocket. That means we can set the rocket way down low into the frame of the vehicle even. And now when you use the rocket, you're not going to have that really bad squat in the front. Instead, you're going to have it in the rear, which is much better because the rocket's putting more thrust straight ahead instead of downward. So on the default location, you basically can't control it when it's thrusting and you're going to crash. With this one, you just have a nice forward thrust that's very easy to control as you're driving it the main thing you gotta do is make sure you leave enough room to slow down because you will be going fast we are already over 100 miles per hour and slamming on our brakes way back there is just enough time to really do this corner and you can also use the thrusters mid corner as well to kind of do a drift or push yourself away from the wall it's surprisingly useful if you get used to it Anyways, that's enough driving. Let's do a small crash. Trying to get into the air, not quite working. Instead, we just slammed face first into a tree. And there are two other settings for the rocket we can change. First, we can increase the amount of fuel up to 100 liters, which is double what it has by default. And then we can also increase the boost up to 100,000 newtons, which is a little over three times what it has by default. And now it's much faster. So I'm just gonna floor it and we're gonna see how fast do we go. And as you can see, the answer is faster than any car that comes with the game. That will easily outrun a regular drag car. And I bet if we did a quarter mile with it, we'd probably be getting close to like five seconds. That's definitely something we'll have to test a little bit later. But right now, I have a new goal. Do you see that gas station down there with the red roof? I want to land at that gas station. And I can think of two different ways of trying to approach this. So I'll show you both methods. They both start off exactly the same. We launch ourselves off of that little point and we fly towards the gas station. For this one though, I'm always hitting the thrusters when the truck is pointed upwards. So I'm trying to reduce the speed that we fall at. So when we land, we have a truck that can still drive. So I think the front drive shaft still works at this point. So we can just drive ourselves over to the gas station and then be like, hey, fill her up. And the gas station attendant will come here and be like, Heck no, that thing is an explosion risk. I am not filling that thing up. So then the alternative method 
is we just launch the vehicle straight into the gas station and crash land into there. So on this one, I'm really trying to make sure we go upwards as vertical as possible to clear the trees that are directly in front of it. Now I'm using the thrusters when the truck is pointed towards me to slow it down so we don't overshoot the gas station. And I undershot the gas station just a little bit so it can just gently roll right in front of it like so. Because if we crashed at the gas station, we would have probably overshot it. And yep, my engine completely fell out. Might as well give you guys a look at the rest of the damage to the truck. And now I want to see how fast can we go using the rocket. So we need to go to a map with a lot of long straightaways and Utah USA is a great option for that. And as I mentioned earlier, this can be equipped to any vehicle. For example, we can grab an ETK K series and we'll get the highway police edition. And then it's the exact same procedure. We find the license plate, we change it to the JATO rocket. And then you'll notice here, the rocket is floating above the car. That's because it's a low to the ground car, but that's easy to fix. We just go to the tuning menu and we change the offset. So we set it to maybe like negative 0.393. Sure, why not? And now it's actually mounted onto the roof and it should be nice and sturdy. So let's see how fast can we go. And I should mention, the rocket works pretty similar to the ones that are equipped to the bus. When you're flooring it, it activates, but it will deactivate between shifts, or if you only do about half throttle. So we're going about 260 miles per hour, but we have been popped into the air. Either way, that's much faster than an ETK could normally go, especially the police edition, which isn't anything too fancy. And we flew quite a distance after the crash. And for going almost 300 miles per hour, this car is surprisingly intact. I thought for sure it was going to slam into a wall and just obliterate itself. And how about now we add rockets to a car that should probably never have rockets attached to it. The Yabishu Pigeon. It's a pigeon though. It wants to fly. And what better way to fly than with rockets? The only thing that would be better is flapping wings, but I have yet to see a mod that adds wings that have flapping capabilities. And here you notice the rockets are way too far off on the side of the vehicle. Thankfully with the ones on the side we can adjust the offset. So if we bring the rockets closer to the vehicle like so, that will look much better. We can also change how close they are to the front. So right now they are as far back as they can go, but we can put them a whole meter forward, which puts them like right on the very front of the vehicle, which doesn't look right. So we'll bring them back to where they start. And you'll also notice if they wiggle a little bit like that, that means they're not fully secured. So we bring them a little bit closer until they don't have the wiggle. Then I feel like the rockets are secured and we can go fast-ish. We gotta wait till we get to the straightaway. Once we're lined up with the straightaway, we gun it, and here we go, 200, like 300 miles per hour, and then complete destruction. That is what I expected to see out of the ETK. We just happened to get it out of the pigeon. Although, we didn't get to fly. I wanted to see the pigeon actually go for a bit of a flight. So this time, I'm going to try to line it up with a mountain that will hopefully pop us more into the air. And we're going only 120 miles per hour right now, but that's enough to blow up the engine. And now we go fast, 200, 300, and now that is a flying pigeon. It was only for a few seconds, but it flew a great distance. And it held up a little bit better. I really only do mean, though, a little. It is still completely destroyed. So here's a quick look at the damage, and then we'll go ahead and reset it. And now we're going to attach the rockets to a mod vehicle. So we're going to grab the Setsuma 210 for this. And just like the stock vehicles, we do the exact same thing. We go to the license plate and add the Universal Jato rocket. There is one small problem though. When we try to use the rocket right now, it just shoots off into the distance and we're sitting here without any sort of extra speed. So how do we fix that? Well, if we go into license plate design and then Jato rockets, there are a couple of alternative options under attachment node. So what you do is you just try out all the options and eventually one of them usually works. So that one doesn't work, so we try the next one and see if this one works. Still no, so we go to the next one. And how about now? So now it's working, although the rocket is pointing almost straight down at the moment. Again, that's not too hard to fix. We just go to the tuning menu and then we're gonna change the offset so it actually sits on the roof of the vehicle. So how does that look? Still a little too high, so we'll go a little lower still. See how that looks. And now it's actually mounted onto the vehicle and we can drive, sort of. This thing is not geared to actually make use of the rocket because once we're topped out, the rocket won't go off anymore. It's just sitting completely idle, which is unfortunate. Thankfully though, there is a workaround. We turn off the engine and then we don't have to worry about the gearbox at all. It'll accelerate all the time and the only time it won't is when you let up trying to remain in control of the vehicle, which it didn't really happen there as you saw. We are completely out of control and now we're just gonna let it fall and see where it ends up. 
Apparently, we're going to end up on the dirt road. Not at all where I expected to be. And we got a pretty decent amount of damage to the vehicle, which we'll take a look at in a second. Oh, look at that. It landed perfectly on the rock. So what happened? It was an off-roading accident. I tried to climb the rock, and that happened. No, actually, it was the rockets. So anyways, there's the damage, and then we'll reset it. And so far, we've only really taken a look at one half of the mod. Because the mod allows you to attach rockets to any car, and it allows you to attach the ram plow to any car. So I want a nice big vehicle to attach the ram plow to, and this looks great for that. And again, same procedure as before. We attach the universal Jado slash ram plow, and then we go to the ram plow, and we go ahead and attach it. And with some vehicles, you may need to do some extra changes to make it attach up correctly. But with this vehicle, we don't need to do anything at all. It just attaches, and it's there, and it's ready to go. We'll also modify the rockets. We'll put them to the side of the vehicle. And how's that positioning look? That looks good enough to me. And now, when we have a ram plow, we need cars to ram. So let's go ahead and spawn up some traffic. And this vehicle works surprisingly well because it's a nice heavy-duty limousine that weighs a lot. So it can really bully these other cars with the ramp. Definitely not as strong as something like the T-Series with the Ram Plow because that could just plow through traffic and not care. But this is still doing a decent job of getting everybody out of its way and still accelerating pretty consistently. And the rockets definitely help though, that is for sure. With the regular engine, it would not be going that fast plowing through traffic. So it's a really good thing that the mod gives you both the rockets and the Ram Plow because just the Ram Plow would be useless. As you see here with just one rocket, that was useless because I crashed almost immediately. And if we had no rockets, it would be way too slow. Also, now would be a good time to mention, if I did that dumb thing where I had a clip at the start of the video, I'd be like, the president has a rocket-powered limo with a ram plow attached, and he must get to his destination as fast as possible. How did he get a car like this? Find out in this video. And what is the president's destination? I don't know, the tunnel or something. <laughs> There's no real destination in mind, but we'll set that as the official one because I'm pretty sure we can make it there. No problem, even ramming into everybody in front of me and we just barely technically made it because we wrecked ourselves on the tunnel. And you kind of see the damage to this vehicle. It really has been wrecked on both the left and the right side. So the ram plow works really good when you have a nice heavy vehicle. Now what if, for example, you don't have a big, strong, durable car to attach the ram plow to? Like, you just have this itty bitty pickle who weighs almost nothing, but you still want to attach the ram plow to him. Well, you can do that, and with enough tuning, it'll work okay-ish. To get it just to work okay-ish though, there is a lot of setup we need to do. So first we attach the parts like normal, and again we're going to want the door mounted rockets, which are way too far to the side, and these ones are a little bit glitchy I noticed, because they like to make the doors open up, which just causes chaos. So you got to get these guys really in there deep, so they don't just fall off like that. And also you notice there, the ram plow wasn't attached at all. So yeah, there's a lot of tuning to do. First, for the ram plow, we need to change the attachment node and we pick the ones that are called Piccolina Unibody, which are designed specifically for this vehicle. And sometimes with mods, you might have it be a little confusing, like, well, maybe this mod is based on the pickle, so we need to pick the pickle part for the ram plow to make it attach up, and that will usually work. Anyways, we still need to change the location of the rockets though because they are falling off. So I'm going to put them way inside just trying to get them to stay on. That looks good. And we could also adjust the location of the ram plow similar to how we did with the rockets. But I'm not going to worry about that because it's fine. It's not technically attached to the vehicle, but it's good enough to smash into them like so. Except you look at the pickle and the front suspension just kind of ruined and we can't drive anymore. So what do we do about that? Well we can change the deformation and braking resistance of the vehicle. So if we bring this to like 10 on both, it'll make the vehicle 10 times stronger than it normally is. And now hopefully we can plow through the traffic without the car falling apart after the very first impact. So here is the big test. We're going like 120 miles per hour and then boom, right into the car. And after that, the pickle still looks great, so hopefully we can just keep plowing in the cars until eventually we run out of rocket fuel or I get bored of it, whichever happens first. And I'm trying not to back down from the crashes, but these cars are a lot heavier than me, so sometimes the crashes do just push me off of the road like that. But we can get back on the road and keep on fighting since, again, even after those impacts, we don't have any significant damage to the vehicle that affects its driving capabilities. So here we go, right into this guy, only going about 50 miles per hour, but that's a nice crash. We like stood them up. I like the way these crashes are going with this car. They just kind of pop them up, 
completely vertical and then they fly out of the way. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, my car also gets popped out of the way a little bit too. Oh, like right there, I got popped out of the way just as much, if not more, than I popped them out of the way. And that's just because my car is lighter. It's more durable, but it ain't heavy and strong. It's still a little pickle at its heart, who has flown off of the road, but doesn't have much damage because he is so strong. After all that, you look at the car and it's very, very minor damage. Now I want to see how fast is a car with rockets strapped to it in a straight line compared to a car that's designed to go fast in a straight line like the drag version of the Moonhawk. So we're going to do a couple of races at West Coast USA and compare the times. And first we just need to get the baseline. So what does a drag modified version of the Moonhawk get in the quarter mile? We are going to find out in just under 5 seconds. So this car gets a time of just under 8 seconds at 7.863. So I'm going to add rockets to this car, and we're going to do the run again. Okay, we now have just the normal rockets installed, so we're going to see how much does this affect the quarter mile time. And you can tell right off the bat, this thing is accelerating much harder. 4.853. That was almost half of the time of the previous run. You strap rockets to a car, it's going to be fast. But here's the thing. These rockets weren't even at max power yet because we were only at the default of 30,000 newtons. We can go up to 100,000 newtons, although there is one small problem with this. Can you guess what that problem's gonna be? Here, let me show you as I gently accelerate and then floor it, and yeah, the doors just fly off to who knows where. So we can fix this though, it's a little cheaty, but we could just put the rockets way inside of the car so they won't tear off the doors because more of the force is being imparted into like the roll cage of the vehicle. And you see, that works perfectly fine. So now let's go ahead and actually do it on a timed drag race run. And this is gonna go fast, so do not blink. <laughs> 2.936. That is ridiculously fast. You know that other time I have there that's 2.965? That one was cheating because I basically just teleported the car to the finish line and I somehow beat that time. Don't ask me how, but I did. All right, so for one final test, I wanna get a normal, big, fat, heavy car, strap rockets to it just like this one and see if it's just as fast. Okay, so we have a big, fat H35 with the extended frame. So this is a big van and we're gonna see how fast can it go. Again, we got the fully maxed out rockets, and well then, that is not what I expected to see happen. We have so much power, it just launched us upwards. And I did the same thing as before, where I put the rockets in the inside so the doors wouldn't just rip off. Unfortunately, it seems like this configuration's not exactly gonna work out. We gotta be careful on the throttle, and oh, nope, even if I'm trying to be careful with it, that is not enough. And somehow I have just stripped the body of the vehicle off of the frame. Right, so let's get a car where the doors sit a little bit farther back then and hopefully that'll keep it level in a straight line and not launching into the air. So once again, I'll be back once it's set up. Okay, so I went ahead and got my favorite truck, the D35 Beast, and we have the same setup where the rockets are deep inside the door so hopefully they stay on during the drag race. So everyone's fingers are crossed and it is working very, very well. And we have a time of just over four seconds, so the extra weight definitely slows it down some, but that's still a very, very fast time that's faster than any ordinary drag car is going to be able to achieve. So now to finish things up, why don't we go ahead and fly a car off of Leap of Death. And for this test, I already have a car set up, so this is a 390 GTR version of the Bull Light with the rockets equipped to it, because this car has a lot of aerodynamics on it, which make it fly pretty straight most of the time. So if we just fly off the edge like that, you see it's nice and level, which means it's hopefully good for using rockets in the air, or maybe not in the air. We're going to try it both ways. First one, we drive off of the ramp normally, and then try to control our orientation with the rockets, which... Yeah, we're not really doing much in terms of actually controlling it, we're just slightly changing the path ever so little. That's all we managed to do. I'll let it go all the way to the water, and then we'll reset it and we'll do a run where we just go as fast as possible off the ramp and see what happens. So, splash into the water with you.
quick look at what's left and then reset and here we go nice and slow and then fast as we can possibly go for the rest of the ramp we hit that thing at like 130 miles per hour and i am almost certain that we are going to land directly into the water because that was beautiful also kind of interestingly that did blow up the engine completely so you can blow up the engine using the rockets if you're not careful so that's why it cuts out between shifts so you don't blow up your engine so there we are into the water and i think that's gonna do it for this video until next time this has been ybr and remember if you like or dislike this video i will know i can tell by how fast the vehicle is made when you strap rockets to it so do the right thing and i'll see you next time